Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to cover how to do data modeling for Power Apps, or sometimes known as creating an Entity Relationship Diagram, or ERD. Unlike most of my videos, this one will be all theory, but if you want me to actually build out this data model in Power Apps, then let me know below in the comments. I think the best way to understand this is just to do it, so let's go build a data model for a real-world scenario. We're going to be building an app for a property management company. They manage dozens of vacation rentals, and they need an app that lets them schedule their housekeeping staff. So similar to how it works in a hotel, guests check out, then a housekeeper goes in, cleans, and gets it ready for the next guests. So where to start? Well, first we need our entities. An entity is an object used to model or manage data. If you're coming from a database background at all, this is basically a table. And in fact, Microsoft is actually calling these tables now rather than entities, but they're the same thing. And I sometimes like to think of an entity as just the things that make up an app. In Power Apps and Dynamics 365, there are several built-in entities, things like your contact, account, lead, and a case. But then you can also create your own entities or tables, and in our scenario, we're probably going to need to do that. Here's what we have so far for this scenario. We're dealing with a property management company. They manage vacation rentals or houses. These houses have individual owners, and the owners of the houses don't need to access the app. And then, of course, we have the housekeepers who need to clean the houses. This should happen at a specific date and time after the guests check out. And then housekeepers will need access to the app so they can see the appointments and their schedule for the day. So let's decide which entities we need. What are the things or objects involved in this scenario? Any guesses? Well, first we need something to represent the houses, right? So we'll add that to our list. Houses have owners. We need some way to represent them. Obviously, we need to account for the housekeepers. And then lastly, we need something to represent this part, the specific date and time, kind of like an appointment for the housekeeper to do cleaning. So just going through your scenario or a list of requirements is a good way to figure out which entities you need. Go through and think of the things or the objects required for the application to function. So I've added some boxes here. I've updated the names just a little bit to make them more concise, but we have a housekeeper, an appointment, a house, and a homeowner. Next, we need to figure out if we need to build custom entities or tables, or if we can just use what's out of the box. Where possible, you want to reuse the out-of-the-box entities that come with Power Apps if you can. There's really no sense in reinventing the wheel for things like a contact, which already has common fields like name, address, phone, email address, and more. It does take time just to learn all of the entities that you get out of the box, but I'll give you some hints for our scenario. So let's just start here with housekeepers. We said that they do need access to the app. That means they're going to need Power Apps user accounts. That's actually not totally true if you're building something like a portal, but let's say that we're building a Power Apps model-driven app or using Dynamics 365. Out of the box, there's an entity for users where you can give each housekeeper a login, control their permissions, and so on. So we're going to reuse the user entity for this one, and it'll have all the standard fields that we get out of the box. Username, password, email address, and that kind of thing. For appointment, let's talk about the fields we need before we decide if we need a custom entity or not. We're going to need date, time, house, the housekeeper assigned, status, dirty, clean, etc., and then comments. Now, there is an appointment entity built into Power Apps to do things like record a phone call or a sales meeting or something like that, but for our scenario, it's probably best to create this one as a custom entity. So we'll do custom here. Moving over to house, I'll tell you there's really nothing out of the box that's going to fit what we need for a house, so this will also be a custom entity. And then for fields here, we're going to need the address of the house, how many bedrooms and bathrooms it has, just so the housekeepers know what they're up against, who the homeowner is, access instructions like where to get the key or the lockbox code, any special requests like leave a bottle of wine for the next guests or this one has a jacuzzi that you need to clean, something like that. And then we'd also like to be able to see a list of all cleaning appointments for the house on that house's record. And then finally, homeowner. Here we need things like name, address, phone number, email address, and so forth. And luckily for us, there's a contact entity that has all of those fields, so we can reuse that. Cool. 
This is what we have so far for our data model. Now let's talk about relationships. No, no, not those kinds of relationships. Relationships between our tables. There's three types of relationships we'll be working with. One to n, n to one, and n to n. The n part is sometimes called many, so one to many relationship or many to many. I should note there is no one to one relationship in Power Apps. So let's go through these one at a time. I'll just use the out of the box entities for some examples, and then we'll figure out what we need for our specific scenario. Starting with the one to n or one to many relationship, an example of this relationship would be accounts to contacts. One account can have many contacts, and this is a screenshot of the out of the box account entity in Dynamics 365. And I know when I was learning this, it was really helpful to think about the UI, the user interface. In a model driven app, the N side of the relationship is represented as a subgrid. So the many things shown in a subgrid or kind of a table sort of view here. Now I should point out that every one to N relationship is also an N to one. It just depends what direction you're looking. For example, here we have an N to one relationship contacts to account, meaning multiple contacts can be related to a single account. So N to one contacts to accounts and the order in which you read that matters. And then pushing that one over to the right of the slide here on the left, we have the reverse that we saw before here, rather than going contacts to accounts, we're going accounts to contacts one to N. So on the left, one account can have many contacts on the right. Many contacts can be related to a single account. Both are describing the same relationship. Just be careful which direction you're going. Incidentally, thinking about the UI again, the one side of the relationship is selected with a lookup field. So that magnifying glass there, you're going to look up to a single item. The thing you're looking up to is the one side of the relationship. So in this case, we're looking up to a single account record. So account would be the one side of the relationship if that helps you figure it out. And then our third and final type of relationship, which is end to end or many to many, something like opportunities to competitors taken again from the Dynamics 365 interface. An opportunity can have many competitors and a competitor can be involved with multiple opportunities. So we have a many on both sides of the relationship and hence a subgrid on both sides as well. So back to the data model we're building, what do you think? Well, hopefully you can see that we need a relationship between housekeeper and the appointment. When we go to create a new appointment, we have to say, this is the housekeeper who should be doing the cleaning. We also need to know which house to clean, obviously. So we have a relationship between the appointment and the house. And then the house has a homeowner, so we have that relationship there as well. But what kinds of relationships? One to N, N to one, N to N. Let's start with the housekeeper and do the trick to think about what the UI would look like. So say that I'm creating an appointment. This is my crude UI here. On the UI, when we go to assign a housekeeper to the appointment, we want to search or browse for a specific housekeeper, right? So the thing we're browsing to is the one side of the relationship, in this case, housekeeper. So housekeeper would be the one and appointment would be the N. An appointment can have one housekeeper and a housekeeper can have multiple appointments. And depending on the tooling that you're using to create your diagram, you might see connectors like this for the different types of relationships or even some other variation. Since I'm just using PowerPoint, I'm going to go with the arrowhead to represent the N side. And relationships are actually between two entities, not entities and fields. So moving up this line just to make it a little bit more clear. Okay, we had some other relationships to handle as well. We had the house on an appointment related to the house entity. So again, thinking of our UI from the appointment, we want to look up to one house, right? So the house would be on the one side of the relationship and appointment would be on the N side. Like this. And then finally, the homeowner on the house to the homeowner entity. Here, when you're entering information for a new house, you're going to want to browse to just a single owner. 
So homeowner would be the one side and house would be the N side. One house can have one homeowner and one homeowner can have many houses. Obviously in the real world, a house can have multiple owners, but we're just going to keep things simple here. And ta-da! That's our entity relationship diagram. I know this was just one simple scenario, but hopefully that gives you a better grasp of how you can work through and break things down for a data model of any type of an app and some of the tips to help along the way. As far as tools for creating ERDs, there's lots of options out there. Visio has been around forever. It's a great go-to tool for diagrams in general. Specific to Power Apps and Dynamics 365, there's the XRM Toolbox and specifically the ERD Visio Builder. This lets you generate Visio diagrams using the metadata in Dataverse. There's also Diagrams.net, which is a browser-based diagramming tool or PowerPoint like I've done here. Okay, so that does it for this video. If you want me to do a video where we actually build out this data model in Power Apps, let me know below in the comments. In the meantime, I'm including a link here to a course where we do build the end-to-end -end application starting with a data model, so you might enjoy that. And that does it for now. Thanks so much for watching.